How to Think Like a Plant with Harriet Witt. You are using the rods and cones in your eyes to see this picture of the rods and cones in your eyes. The cones handle your color vision and the other ones handle black and white. Your rods and cones are light receptors. Our light receptors were invented four billion years ago by blue-green algae. This happened when blue-green algae jump-started life on Earth by inventing photosynthesis. What science calls photosynthesis is what nature calls light becoming life. Blue-green algae's light receptor worked so well that it's been preserved and passed on for four billion years by DNA. DNA is the record of life's successes. The genes for our light receptors connect us to the origins of Earth's four billion year experiment with life. This connection with our origins is our originality. Our human genome retains the genomic memory of many plant ancestors. Our nervous systems evolved from plant roots. What you're seeing here is human brain tissue photographed with a new micro-etching technique involving photolithography. Notice the portion of the brain in the lower right-hand corner, which you'll see magnified in our next two images. With every breath we draw, we draw upon the plants who invented the branching structures of the bronchial tree that we call our lungs. All of us began life as fetuses inside a placental sac originated by plants. Life improvised a transport system for moving beyond its own demise. The system is called a placenta, whether it serves plant or animal. And notice what connects the fetus to its placenta. We grew at the end of a stem until we were ripe. Human sperm originated from plant pollen. Sperms, like pollen grains, do the job of transporting genes. Our bodies have receptors for aspirin, estrogen, testosterone, cannabinoids, and theogens, and many other plant substances because our genomic ancestors are plants. And what you're seeing here is cannabinoid receptors. Thanks to our DNA, we retain the genomic memory of our plant ancestors. What happened to make us so different from plants? 2.3 billion years ago, life on Earth teetered on the brink of extinction because of oxygen exhaust from burgeoning populations of blue-green algae. As these plants photosynthesize, they exhale oxygen exhaust. But early Earth had no way to absorb all of the oxygen from burgeoning blue-green algae populations. Therefore, this oxygen was toxic. This oxygen pollution built up in the oceans, turning them rust red as the oxygen rusted, oxidized iron particles naturally occurring in the sea. This pollution also built up on land and in the air, causing many species to go extinct. Eventually, pollution levels got so high that even blue-green algae was threatened. This event, 2.3 billion years ago, is called the Great Oxygen Holocaust. Then, just in the nick of time, life displayed originality. Life improvised a way to recycle the pollution into fuel, and a new creature mutated into existence. This innovative creature used the oxygen as fuel for its metabolism. Now it grew faster and it bred faster because it was actually living faster. This creature is, along with sea sponges, among our ancient animal ancestors. Our planet's original animals, like her original plants, were ocean dwellers. Eventually, just a few hundred million years ago, some of these ocean creatures ventured up onto land. Oh, what a challenge that was. 
Okay, now give yourself a moment to look at the bones in the backs of your hands. The bones in the backs of your hands are fish fins that extended into fingers when our aquatic ancestors found themselves on land. Thanks to life's originality, fingers kept evolving. Drawing on the strength we inherited from our plant and animal ancestors, we're understanding how fragile our biosphere is. Our biosphere depends on a relationship that began 2.3 billion years ago when life originated a solution to the life-threatening problem of oxygen exhaust pollution brought on by burgeoning populations of blue-green algae. Life's response to the Great Oxygen Holocaust was to originate a new animal that recycled the oxygen into fuel for its metabolism. The result of this originality is that oxygen exhaust from plants becomes fuel for us and other animals. This cooperation between plants and animals is the great breath of planet Earth. The great breath is visible as the swirling protective film of atmosphere that makes life on our planet possible. The great breath is a worldwide interspecies interdependency that allowed earthly life to evolve greater complexity. The great breath is a global cooperation. If it were not global, then humans and other animals in areas where plants quit photosynthesizing in winter would have no oxygen to breathe in winter. 98% of our DNA is pre-human. However, during the age of industry, we were culturally conditioned to view ourselves as superior to the pre-humans who are our ancestors. This false sense of superiority has set the stage for deep internal conflict. Fortunately, Native Hawaiians have never forgotten our plant ancestry. Native Hawaiians actively cultivate the genomic memory of our plant ancestry. Native Hawaiian wisdom tells of the Hawaiian people's origins in the legend of the Haloa brothers. The legend of the Haloa brothers begins with their father, Wakea, the expanse of the heavens, and their mother, Ho'o Hokukalani, to adorn the heavens with stars. Ho'o Hokukalani gave birth to a boy who was stillborn. His parents buried him on the morning sun side of the house. Before long, a plant grew from the spot where the baby was buried. It had a heart-shaped leaf and a long stalk. It was the first kalo. Ho'o Hokukalani became pregnant again. This time she gave birth to a healthy baby boy. He was named Haloa in honor of his older brother, the kalo. This healthy baby Haloa was the first human. It is said that all Hawaiians trace their roots back to Haloa, Hawaiians say that through our relationship with Haloa, we are related to the Kalo and to the entire natural world. The plants, animals, and islands are our ancestors. As we ponder the legend of the Haloa brothers, it's helpful to remember that Ha in Hawaiian means breath and Loa means great. So Haloa means great breath. Question, is the legend of the Haloa brothers a genomic memory of the sibling species who cooperate with each other in the great breath that sustains our biosphere? Would you like me to run it through again, or is that... Uh... Well, that was great. I think you did it in one take. Yeah, that was great. Beautiful. Um, would yeah, you like good. to say, before you take it off, would you like to say the name of your website and the mic? Mm. My website is PassengerPlanet.com. Okay. Is there anybody you want to thank or anything else you want to say? This has been created with deep appreciation for the wisdom of the Native Hawaiian people.